Renee interviews Chris Jericho. I know I've asked this before. Why is he still Lionheart? Why do they take Judas away from the fans? I realize Jericho's whole deal is reinventing himself before he gets stale over and over again, but uh, this feels like trying to find a solution to a problem that did not, did not exist. So Jericho says he wants to clear the air with Hook. And I was very confused. Taz was very confused. No idea what's going on. Jericho quotes Judas and notes all of his teammates and partners end up as enemies. Uh, he's getting booed here more than he has in a long time for whatever reason. He asks Hook to believe in him. Hook says, I do believe in you. That's why I got us a match on Collision. But I'll be keeping my eye on you. And Jericho approves. Jericho was booed a lot. He was booed quite a bit. He was booed a lot. They have a hook signal. That's He's what like they call it. Batman now. Hit the hook signal. They're like, hit the hook signal. And the big spotlight with an H or whatever appears there. It says hook. And he comes out. It's an and H and an O and an O and K. This is, a, this is, this is I, I'm going to interested to see where this is going because the fans do not trust Chris Jericho at all. And they like hook. And I think that they're actually supposed to be like a babyface tag team. And maybe they're just going to like power on through until the fans figure out that they're not going to have Jericho turn on him immediately. Or maybe Jericho is and the fans have got it figured out. I don't know. But, I don't um, know. It's all very strange. They do not trust him at all. It seems like they should not have to go through this much work to book a tag team match, especially considering they've already been a tag team. I think also part of it is that, you know, Jericho's coming out. He's Lionheart now. Yeah. And I'm not even sure why. Well, it started because he was feuding with luchadors. Yes. That but, made sense because that's what he was in Mexico. But then he just continued to be yeah, now I don't get Lionheart. It. And they've they've taken away Judas. Yes. And Judas was the thing that the fans were most into as part of his baby face and heel act, I might add. Yeah. So they've taken that away. And so now he comes out to this music and then, you know, and part of the storyline is, you know, Hook goes, I know who you are. And so Hook is even kind of, I don't know if I trust you, brother. So, uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. A Shane Taylor Promotions promo. Complete with stupid camera zooms going on. They did stuff like this in like the original ECW in like early like '96, but it's supposed to look, you know, unpolished and raw. Here with a multi-million dollar company, it just looks low rent and amateurish. Stop doing this. They challenged Lionhook to a tag match, and I presume that's it. Well, here we go. By the time I watched Dynamite. Uh, it was many hours after the show had aired, and I'd seen a lot of feedback and been sent directly a lot of feedback about this Billy oh, yes. J. White match. So I went into it with very, very low expectations. I thought they were going to fuck up everything. I thought someone was going to get hurt. I thought it would just cringe where they start to finish. And it starts. Billy's, be Billy's beating him up. I must say it's so bad. He's going to beat him up for a bit. In the end, Jay will overcome it, outsmart him. Take him down, maybe cheat to win, but, uh, you know, I want to see what the fuss is all about. And then Billy beat him, and he beat him. Take him into the crowd, beat him up there. I hope someone went back and counted how long they were outside the ring, as Aub Aubrey was counting, and just she would just start over. Well, every now and then, Billy would, like, roll inside. <laughs> just Every four you know, or five minutes. <laughs> so. And I got to say, man, you know, they... they uh... I also had heard all about this before it started, yeah. and it was still much worse. <laughs> it was it was actually worse than I thought, and I was just writing down everywhere they brawled, <laughs> and then at some point I wrote, "Have I missed anywhere there you could possibly beat a person?" And then and then I did. They were in the crowd, yeah. and on balconies or wherever the fuck they were, and. He beat him and beat him and beat him and fucking beat him and beat him and beat him. And Jay finally gets the heat for, I swear to God, it wasn't even a minute. And then he hits the ropes and he eats a tilt-a-whirl. And I he, honestly, I watched the entire match. I don't remember Billy selling one thing. Uh, he didn't. There was a point where he was yeah. outside. Okay. And, uh, and he went for a running kick. And Jay moved. Yes. And he kicked the steps. And went bong. And did not sell his foot. No. And he just looked at Jay. Yeah. And he continued to beat his ass. Now, here's the thing, okay? It's not just that Billy Gunn beat this guy's ass for 20 minutes, okay? That fucking sucked. It was terrible, okay? But there are other issues, such as the guy whose ass he beat the whole time was Jay White. Jay White. Former 
IWGP heavyweight champion. Just recently, he had that feud with MJF where he stole the belt and had people convinced he would be the next champion. I told people he wouldn't be. They didn't believe me. But MJF wins. He'll be fine. Look at this booking of Jay White. He went from a world title feud to doing absolutely jack shit as part of the Bang Bang Scissor Gang. He just stood around with them all the time. He never did anything. They did the goddamn lamest home invasion I've ever seen in my entire life. And Billy is so outraged that his kids came into the house with another guy and then immediately left without doing any damage whatsoever that he has to beat Jay White within an inch of his life for 20 fucking minutes or whatever. And then on top of that, they show the acclaimed laid out backstage. Yeah. They're dead, okay? Yeah. They're dead. They've been laid out and killed. So finally, Jay's been beaten so fucking badly that the guns run down to like, cover his fallen carcass save him they want to at least have a body to bury well billy gunn after hitting his finish twice but refusing to cover he goes to get a chair and uh, and jay white hits him in the balls for a disqualification now i realize that i've said i'm okay with the disqualification every now and then because it's okay every now and then to do a dq or a count out you don't need to do it just once a year. I don't want it multiple times on every show or even every show, but it's okay every now and then. Fucking this was not the time. And then, after the DQ, out comes a goddamn fucking acclaimed, not selling anything. They have just risen from the dead. And they go to run wild, but Daddy Ass and the acclaimed... Uh, they beat uh, Jay White's ass again. <laughs> yes. They beat him again. And he is finally dragged away by his friends. And, you know, I've seen a lot of things in WWE, particularly, where, you know, some guy does a job and the fans go, he's being buried. And I say, he's not being buried, dude. People do jobs every now and then. It's okay. Like, if, if Becky loses to Rhea Ripley at WrestleMania... Some shithead's going to go that she's getting buried, okay? She's not getting buried. She, The babyface doesn't win every time. It's okay for her to lose to Rhea fucking Ripley at WrestleMania. This was a fucking burial of Jay White. Uh -huh. This was like, is he going to be fired? Uh, did he, like, what did he do? And the answer actually is probably nothing. They just booked it like this. But I could not, I mean, it's impossible to watch it and not think, what horrible thing did this guy do? Here's where my, he must be horribly punished on national television. Here's my theory because someone pointed out to me that, uh, like, e e even if he, you're going to fire him and this is his goodbye, there's better ways to use him than getting Billy Gunn over one last, one last match. My theory at this point is he's got a clause in his contract where, like, if they fire him, they still owe a bunch of money. But if he quits, they don't. And so they're trying to get him to quit. That's my theory on this. Because nothing else makes sense. They're not trying to make him quit. It I'm, was just a very, I'm very half, bad idea. I'm half joking. Uh, well, I mean, yeah. maybe you shouldn't be. Yeah. But I don't think they're trying to get him to quit. So It was just a horribly, horribly booked thing. As mentioned, I, how long do you think this match actually went? It probably only went like eight minutes. Uh, if you count the post match, uh, pre match beating, because it's one of those where they fight for five minutes, yes. the 13 minutes. Oh my God. Yeah. 13 minutes? Yeah. Jesus. Yes. Uh, Billy won for all 13 minutes. Like I say, I don't remember him selling one single solitary thing. Uh, the acclaimed no soul they're beating. You mentioned that. The fight keeps going. Someone on the commentary team shouts, This is far from over between these two teams. No. Do not say that. Oh, it's not. There's more to come. It has sucked from start to finish. End it as soon as you can. I realize MGF versus the devil won worst feud of the year last year. But this has to be worse, doesn't it? This has to be worse. You know, we got a question here from Randy. Was it worse than House of Black versus Infantry or House of Black versus Gravity and Commander? Funny that both matches involved House of Black, hmm. but one of them was House of Black's fault and one was not. Yeah, yeah. That Gravity match... 
was not their fault. Like, as a wrestling match, it was way better than the gravity match. Well, yes. The gravity match as an actual match was an atrocity. It was yeah. probably the worst actual in-ring match in the history of AEW. Yes. The infantry match was, like, idiotic. But at the end of the day, it was like the infantry just lost in the next round. So it was just it was yeah. a stupid thing. Yeah. This was this was the worst booked segment I've ever seen in AEW. Yeah. And nothing comes close, including the uh, Elite and the Dark Order that everybody lost their minds about. Right. Like, this was much worse. Yeah. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you. WrestlingObserver.com. You have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute, as noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. You also get Observer Archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.